This horrifying event occurred when I was young and studying in an old vocational school. I came from the countryside at that time, so I had to stay in the school's dormitory. I also had two other female friends, Lily and Anna, who came from another rural area to study and stayed in the same dormitory as me. <laughs> Lily was very attractive and pursued by many people, whereas Anna was shy and had never mentioned love before. On the contrary, she was solely focused on her studies. Our dormitory was very cold and dark at night because it was built more than 10 years ago. That was why Anna never wanted to do the bathroom alone. That night, I was falling asleep when I heard someone calling out to me and shaking me to wake me up. I slowly opened my eyes to see what was wrong. Anna was standing next to the bed, her face a little shy but she wanted me to go to the bathroom with her. Because I was used to it, it didn't bother me so I agreed right away. The two of us went to the bathroom together and didn't forget to tease her about how shy she was on the way. But in a trembling voice, she stated that this school had been haunted for a long time and that the ghost story was well known to everyone. I didn't believe in ghosts, so when I heard those words, I didn't pay much attention, even laughing at her that she had heard fake news and was scared for no reason. Then I walked away, returned to the bedroom as soon as possible. And Anna, after hearing what I said, seemed angry because I didn't believe what she said. So Anna chased after me, her face became more serious, her voice no longer trembling and she tried to tell me the story of the ghost in red who haunted this school. It was a female demon who committed suicide out of love and thus couldn't flee. I was still not interested in this story and when we arrived to the bathroom I just told her to go quickly and return as soon as possible. But Anna was a coward. She didn't want me to wait outside. Instead, she told me to go inside and wait. Seeing Anna's fear, I had no choice but to go inside as she instructed and stood close to the wall to look over. This toilet was in desperate need of repair because it was too old. Suddenly, a gust of cold air blew from nowhere, causing my entire body to shiver uncontrollably. Obviously, this was a closed room, so how could there be such a breeze? So, I urged Anna to hurry up and return as soon as possible. When I turned to have a look at the toilet that Anna was using, I noticed something strange. It was the room next to Anna's that was also being used by an other person. I wasn't sure when she was there, but Anna and I walked in and didn't notice her. What was odd was that she was wearing red high heels instead of slippers like the rest of us. It was after midnight, the dorms were closed, no one should dress up to go out at this time and wearing high heels to the bathroom was unusual. Although I wasn't afraid of ghosts, seeing that scene made me nervous so I knocked on Anna's door and continued to urge her. Anna's face was slightly irritated when she walked out as a result of my constant prodding. I didn't say much, just told her that I needed to get back to my room. Anna teased me at the time because she thought standing outside alone made me scared while I dared to say I wasn't afraid of ghosts. I didn't dare to mention the strange woman next to Anna's room because I knew she was very cowardly, so I sneaked a glance to confirm once more if it was really human after all. But unexpectedly, the woman in red shoes vanished and the bathroom was deserted. I couldn't only reassure myself that I was mistaken because I had heard Anna's story and imagined it myself. After that, we returned to the bedroom and I decided not to tell Anna what I had seen. I quickly fell asleep, but no longer after my entire body went numb and it became difficult to breathe as a someone was pressing against me. The air became very cold. I heard the door being opened very loudly. A woman dressed in bright red dress with long black hair stood there. 
I panicked and took a close look at the woman. Her face was extremely frightening. Her wide mouth was full of blood. Her eyes without pupils, only white, and her neck appeared to have been squeezed by something, leaving a fairly obvious mark. Her dress was ripped, but the scariest part was that she was wearing a pair of red high heels, the same ones I saw in the bathroom just before. She was also floating with her feet barely touching the ground. Apparently, she was the female demon Anna mentioned. She just hovered like that and came to Anna's bed. Anna suddenly sat up, not hearing any voice or movement from her. I could only see Anna sat up as if she was ordered to do so by the demon. Anna's eyes were lifeless, like a sleepwalker, and her skin had turned pale. Anna jumped out of bed and began walking slowly across my bed, right behind the female demon. Anna lowered her face, but her body continued to walk unconsciously. I was terrified, but I didn't want Anna to follow the demon, so I screamed and tried to stop her, but my mouth was glued shut. I couldn't open it, and my body was heavy and numb. So, I had no choice but to watch Anna follow the demon out of the room. I was dreaming when I was startled awake by a scream. When I awoke, I opened my eyes and saw that the room was lit, indicating that it was all a dream. Looking at the door, I noticed Lily and other girls from the other room gathered outside. It appeared that something had happened to Anna, because the roommate next door appeared very concerned. She said with a serious face and trembling voice, something happened to Anna and she asked everyone to come to have a look. Anna was in the bathroom. I looked over at Anna's bed and she was no longer there. I began to be concerned about my dream last night. We were all panicked and at the time rushed there to see Anna's situation in my heart. I just hoped she didn't meet anything serious. Lily was the first to arrive and I still didn't know what happened to Anna when I heard Lily scream in fear. I was startled as well. I also rushed inside to watch as most heinous thing I could not bear happening right in front of my eyes. Anna was dead. She was sitting on the floor, her skin pale. Could it be that my dream from the previous night came true and it was the female demon who killed her? Anna's eyes wide open but white and her face no longer had blood stains and she died because she cut her own wrist. The blood was all over the floor and she must have been in great pain. Later, Anna's family members joined the procession to return Anna's body to her hometown. They also had a heated debate with the school while the school claiming that Anna committed suicide out of love. But I knew Anna had never had a lover and would never do something so stupid. I couldn't get a good sleep after that night. When I recalled the scene on the day Anna died, I always got agitated. In a dream, I saw Anna standing next to the bed, chortling me awake. Seeing Anna again made me very happy and despite the fact that she was dead, I felt no fear. However, Anna appeared to be in a hurry. She simply stated that I needed to go and immediately drew my hand out of bed. I looked down and saw that the cut on Anna's wrist was still open and that the blood was flowing. I began to panic because I remembered the demon in red, afraid that she would have transformed into Anna and seduced me the same way she had taken Anna away that night, so I struggled to fight back. Anna's face erupted in rage. She held and dashed towards me. She rushed to me yelling that there was no time and that I must leave immediately. I awoke from my dream at the same time I heard Lily scream. We exchanged glances and discussed the previous dream. Strangely, Lily had the same dream as me. We believed that Anna wanted us to leave the building for a reason. So without a doubt, we dashed to the door and fled as quickly as we could. As soon as we arrived on the ground floor, a plume of black smoke rose out from the floor. Lily and I were both terrified and had no idea what was going on. The fire broke out after a few minutes and spread to the other floors of the building. Fortunately, we could escape in time. 
Lily and I stood dumbfounded, looking up at our windows, where a figure stood, staring at us. It was Anna, looking at us through the windows with a happy smile on her face. It turned out that Anna was the one who saved us from the fire. Perhaps it was because this was the last thing she wanted to do for us that her smile was so satisfying.